grass sways in the east, sandstorms rage in the south. A mountain of doom blazes in the north, winds batter the cliffs in the west, and in the center, a castle. Around it, eight regions. And within it all, wonder. Looking upon this scenery, one could almost forget the devastation that befell this region 100 years ago. It would be impossible to describe all the beauty that exists in this land. But we can still try, discovering this legendary kingdom, one gentle stream, one sunny meadow at a time. Welcome to the Hyrule Field Guide. The lands of Hyrule paint many pictures, but perhaps the most iconic imagery conjured by the name of the Hylian Kingdom is that of sweeping landscapes of short grass swaying in the wind atop rolling hills. Without even knowing it, weary travelers often think of a specific area within Hyrule when these thoughts arise. The Nekluda region cutting a wedge from the center of the region all the way to its eastern coast. The Nekluda region is well known for its varied topography and temperate climate. It is a profoundly green area of Hyrule, and as such, forms the home for numerous animals. Be it river snails that quietly grow in the warm night, or high-tailed lizards that scuttle through the grass, everywhere one looks, there is life. Western Nekluda lies the closest to Hyrule Field, the central region that suffered the most during the Calamity. Thus, it is littered with ruins and remains. Still, some monuments stand tall, such as the Proxim Bridge, which allows passage from central Hyrule into Nekluda across the Hylia River. Past this bridge, the massive Hylia River is joined by the small Squabble River, which originates from deep within Nekluda and serves as a guiding body of water for travelers trying to conquer the region. Squabble River also splits western Nekluda into a southern and northern half. On the north half, which is additionally surrounded by Hylia River's preceding stream, one can find Batria Lake and its surrounding forest. At first glance, it is a peaceful woodlet, offering up gentle shade around a small lake, adorned with half-sunken logs and subaqueous grass. However, one should tread carefully. Forest octoroks make their home here, and are more than capable of catching unprepared travelers by surprise. The bountiful mushrooms of various kinds that litter the forest might just be worth the risk, though. East of the Batria Lake lies the fractured Nobby Lake. While it was once a single great lake, it has experienced continuous evaporation for a long time, and has recently split into two bodies of water, separated by moist, abandoned mud. The large northern Nobby Lake is still quite deep, and supports many of the ecosystems one would expect in a proper lake. It is also a hotspot for monster encampments, so travelers best avoid it unless they are armed. The South Nobby Lake is, by comparison, not much more than a puddle. Shallow and small, it sits alone, left to slowly dwindle by itself. But, be it as it may, it still supports some species of fish, such as Hyrulean bass, making it a viable spot for fishing. On the southern shore of the western Squabble River, one can follow the Nakluda Road into the eastern region, or one could scale the Bomber Hills. These tall, rocky faces make for excellent vantage points, and are crowned by a massive, decaying tree trunk laying on top of them, fallen apart into multiple pieces, each providing crucial habitat for various critters. 
Scaling the Bomber Hills, however, venturing into the south, one comes across a rather tragic sight. The ruins of Dea. Once, before the calamity, Dea Lake was a hotspot for fishing markets, crown among them Dea Village itself, which proudly offered its signature freshwater fish meals to any weary passerbys that may wander in. Now, 100 years after the downfall, the village lies abandoned and decaying, not dissimilar to the massive tree trunk sitting near it. Waterlocked ruins of rotten wood and a lake that emulates a swamp more than its own former glory have eroded the memories of this once prosperous hamlet. No one lives here anymore, save for the stray talus. The Dea of today stands as a reminder that Hyrule may be gorgeous, but hers is a wounded beauty. Following the Nekluda Road east, one finds one of the major landmarks of Nekluda and of Hyrule as a whole, the Dueling Peaks. Two massive twin mountains, standing tall, facing each other as if in heated combat, thus the name. Looking at their shape, it is obvious to most travelers that this was once a singular mountain. What is not as obvious, except perhaps to the goddess herself, is what exactly split the mountain into two peaks. While it is said that they were ripped asunder by a dragon god, little is truly known. What is irrefutably true is that the dueling peaks of today stand as a gateway, separating East Nekluda from the region's west, as well as the rest of Hyrule. Between its peaks, valuable ores jut out, ready for the taking. And the gentle flow of the Squabble River serves as a guide for those that wish to traverse across Nekluda's two halves. If only it wasn't for the monsters that camp out in this convenient nook as well. Beyond the Dwelling Peaks stretches out Eastern Nekluda, where remnants of the war and thriving communities live side by side. Shortly before passing through under the peaks, the Squabble River forks into a main branch which flows all the way east, and a side branch which originates from a waterfall in the near south. This slices a small, triangular peninsula into Nekluda south. The two streams are made passable by the twin bridges, two crude wooden walkways that provide vital traversability for Nekluda despite their brittle quality. The big twin bridge stands over Squabble River's main branch, while the little twin bridges a path across the side branch and onto the small southern peninsula. On this peninsula, little of note can be found. In its southeast, a small forest called the Hickley Woods provide habitat for various species of birds, rodents, and even goats. It's a lush and green little patch, and even houses a large skeleton of unknown origin, a curiosity for adventurers. However, venturing too deeply into the woods may be ill-advised. Honeyvore bears make their territory here, and they do not like to share it with uninvited guests. Travelers would do well to avoid this area. On the northern shore of Squabble River's main branch sits a monument of rest and safety for the region, the Dueling Peaks Stable. This small inn and stable combo is a hub for tired travelers, where they can rest their bodies and stock up on supplies by trading with passing merchants. Like all Hyrulean stables, the building is crowned with an effigy of the horse goddess Melania, requesting the deity to provide good health and security for all the noble steeds in the land. This distinctive shape is a welcome sight on any horizon. The Dueling Peak Stable has all the amenities a Hyrulean stable is known for, but curiously, it seems to mostly attract twins. The reason for this eerie phenomenon is unexplained. What it also attracts are treasure hunters, for the legendary bandit Misko is said to have been active in the area. 
A perceptive adventurer might be able to eavesdrop on some valuable scoops here indeed. Venturing north from the stable puts a traveler onto Kakariko Road, requiring them to traverse Kakariko Bridge across the long arm of Lake Siela and into the Livia Pillars. This odd mountain range is composed of numerous high, cylindrical spires, forming a wall of rock and stone. The range itself is almost entirely impassable to anyone who lacks wings. Luckily, for the grounded of us, Kakariko Road cuts straight through the Lavia Pillars like a ravine, carving out a winding path like an ancient, invisible river. Travelers will, without issue, surrounded by towering rock walls, be able to follow the road up to one of the older settlements of Hyrule. Tucked away within the Livia Pillars sits Kakariko Village, a peaceful settlement and the homeland of the Shika. Long ago, the Shika tribe were a technologically advanced society whose achievements and contraptions bordered on pure magic. Machines that act autonomously, devices that recorded the land around them. There was no end to their technological prowess. They were naturally consulted during the greatest of all wars, a hundred centuries ago. But once the ancient king of Hyrule witnessed the full might of the Sheikah, he became terrified of an uprising. Thus, he banished the tribe and buried their inventions. While the relationship between the Sheikah and Hyrule would be repaired in the 10,000 years that followed, the Sheikah way of life changed irreparably due to that exile. They founded Kakariko, a farming community that retains little of the high technology their people were known for. It is not all lost. Their garments are made of special fiber that wards off weather and elements, and it is said that the village elder keeps a library of secret records, remnants of the technology they were supposed to forget. Besides that, however, Kakariko is a peaceful village like any other. Decorations and shrines litter the area, and all villagers are kind and friendly to each other. And yet, a certain mystique remains in this pocket of history, hidden away far within the mountains. Even the nearby forest is touched by mystery. According to rumors, a magical fountain resides here, a tantalizing prospect for any adventurer. Should one, however, go east from the Dwelling Peaks stable instead of north, one finds themselves in a portrait of pain and regret. Here lies Blatchery Plain, the site of one of the largest battles that occurred during the Second Calamity War 100 years ago. On the day the kingdom fell, dozens of guardians, Sheikah weapons that had been corrupted by the Calamity, swarmed this plain and turned it into a slaughter ground. Now, Blatchery Plain lies as a graveyard for the murderous machines, countless of them being spread around the area, derelict and broken by the courageous knight that made his last stand here. In the center, the craters from the Guardian's attacks have filled up with water and provided a marshy habitat for frogs and fish, now called the Ash Swamp. Even here, dead Guardians tower forevermore. In the south of the plain, a small collection of trees called the Babinga Forest offers shade to the animals of the area, and is even home to a few bee colonies. It seems to have gone untouched during the calamity, as the trees remain undisturbed, wordlessly looking upon a canvas of pain, slowly healing and being reclaimed by nature and her embrace. In the east of the plain stands the target of the Guardian's assault, Fort Hateno, a massive fortification that separates the road to Hateno village from the rest of Nekluda. Despite the assaulting forces being overwhelmingly strong and technologically superior, Fort Ateno never fell, and so it remains, wounded and battered, but unyielding. Past the fort, the road to the village winds across and around the Cliffs of Quince, 
a curious structure of rocky mountains that are, due to water erosion, extremely porous. Various holes and chasms break up the enormous cliffside, and as such provides a home for animals and monsters alike. Many treasures and dangers lurk here. Nearby, some travelers may stumble upon an ancient graveyard of sorts. They are advised to avoid it. Once travelers best the treacherous terrain of Quince and pass through Ginner and Midla woods, they finally arrive at Hateno village, one of the last thriving Hylian villages. Surrounded by various lakes, ponds, and forests, this quiet village sits as the last bastion of normalcy in a world of ruin. Children play in the streets, and the various shops offer colorful goods. One store even offers to dye clothing in a bizarre traditional manner. Life in Ateno is quiet, kind, and unusually long, given the times. The Grand Ateno Inn is a popular destination for weary adventurers, and even far-off settlements envy a taste of the milk and meat produced by the village's signature Hateno cows, their horns decorated in various colorful ways. In the south of the village, the Bolson Construction Company has recently set up, offering housing and work for prospective homeowners and construction workers, respectively. Just uh, don't bother applying if your name doesn't end with son. The village is also the seat of the Hateno Research Lab, where ancient Shika tech is analyzed and reproduced using energy from the blue furnace nearby, an ancient shrine of sorts with an eternal flame. Rumor has it that this isn't the only oddity in town, however. Whispers about a demonic statue hidden in the village are making the rounds, an abolished monument to a disgraced, forgotten god. South of the village towers Ebon Mountain, a large peak that naturally protects Hateno from harsh weather. Its steep rock face is impossible to scale, but the roads circumventing it are worth taking, for they lead into Hyrule's east coast. The shore here is varied and diverse. Loshlo Harbor is a rocky landing crowned by cliffs and caves ready to be explored. Birds also make their nests here on the steep cliffs, so that only the craftiest, or most reckless, predators can ever reach their precious eggs. Meanwhile, Kitano Bay's tropical trees serve as a gorgeous backdrop for the many migratory birds that gather here. Visitors are, however, advised to steer clear of Ateno Beach for now. Monster activity has recently increased, and thus the area has been deemed unsafe. At the northeastern border of the Nekluda region lies Mapla Point, a circular rock formation with a small pond in the middle. It used to be a fairly popular spot for leisure activities. The Nekluda Sea itself houses many islands, but few attract as much attention to themselves as the distant Eventide Island. This isle sits far off the coast and is extremely hard to reach for the average adventurer, and the rumor of extreme danger and unusual activity on the island has done well to keep most travelers away from Eventide's shores. The lands of Hyrule are scarred, they are wounded, but above all else, they are beautiful. Nekluda is just one example of the lush diversity and wonder this world holds, but it stands perhaps as the starkest reminder that the world never truly ends. Through calamity and upheaval, the trees, the birds, the grass, they endure. And one way or another, so do we. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone. I hope this was not too weird. This was just something I really wanted to try out for a long time. Now I want to see if I could do this. 
Uh, let me know how that worked. I have no clue if I'm going to continue with this or if it's going to be a one-off, but, you know, you let me know. Um, a very special thank you to all of our patrons, which include Fiction Ape, Anthony the Hedgehog, Arcturian711, Big Pidge, Claire Miboon, Danilo Villavicencio, Dissy, Emperor Evie, Geo, Hubble Mirror 123, James and Tate, Magenta Magenta, Kane Eddie, Makot O2, Mr. Pyramid, Mr. Meander, Mr. Chef, Pere Fuego, Pero Scoco, Person 212, Project Iceman, Rambling Robin, Russell, Sir Newt Newt, Oak Wood Tree, Iron Camel, and Courage. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time for Monster Hunter content, basically. Bye-bye.